In this week's episode, I'm talking to Anuja Kulkani from India about how she got started in sourcing, sourcing in APAC, and what the hardest country in APAC is to source in. Welcome to episode 28 of the Sourcing Challenge Show. I'm your host, Mark Longgren. I started off by asking Anuja how she got started in sourcing. So um, I graduated in, um, I did my business administration degree in, in and I, I specialized in HR. Mm -hmm. So right then I knew that I was interested in people. So talking to people, um, handling people matters is something that I always liked. And um, soon after graduation, I got a call from a headhunting company. And obviously at that point, I did not know what headhunting was or lead generation was. But um, it, it was a very initial stage of my career. So I, it, it sounded very interesting for me, for sure. So I think I spent about three and a half years uh, being a research analyst, uh, generating leads, doing headhunting in the APAC market. Mm -hmm. uh, I focused on Japan, right from pharma to legal to manufacturing, IT. I enjoyed working across all the sectors. And of course, uh, during my graduation, I was learning Japanese as well. So it was fun at times to speak um, in Japanese and generating leads. It did give yeah. me a little bit of success for sure. So yeah, that, that's how um, I started my career. And later I moved to a sourcing specialist role and uh, that, of course, again, focused in Japan specifically, um, did that for about three years. I built my sourcing skills. Um, I learned what is Google X research, um, <laughs> learned my bullions. So um, I had a great team in Capgemini. So that I think gave me a great platform to learn what sourcing is, uh, learned a lot of tools and did couple of sourcing challenges as well. So um, that's how I started my career in sourcing. And at the moment, I'm a recruiter. So I think, um, and again, I focus in APAC um, uh, across Asia Pacific. Now my regions have expanded to whole of APAC. So it's fun. I think um, uh, sourcing gives, I mean, it's challenging, right? So I think that's how I, uh, I've started my career right in the sourcing, headhunting, and now I'm a recruiter. What's the big differences between the different APAC countries of, you know, what you look for or how you build your Boolean or how you approach people? APAC has its, uh, I mean, every country in Asia Pacific has its own different, uh, I mean, it's, I could say not challenge, but it has its own beauty. So uh, they have different languages. They have a uh, different set of cultures. So I think, um, if I just talk about China, I don't speak Chinese or I speak a little bit of Japanese. So I think it's so much fun to, uh, you know, try to understand how my search could actually work in each of the country. So, of course, LinkedIn is something that I relied on all my career. But um, there could be other tools like, um, you know, if I have to connect with people in China, I would always look, I will always rely on WeChat. Mm -hmm. If I have to connect with people in Japan, I would, you know, connect with them via line. So I think there are different tools instead of the typical sourcing tools. I think I, I rely on uh, the, I mean, the social media more. So, um, because it's easier to connect. And I think no Boolean searches, no specific Boolean search would actually look, run i mean successful in apac because you never know the candidate might have written a cv in chinese mm -hmm. so either you have you can seek help from a local um, partner there and get it converted get it translated um in chinese or a local other language korean or japanese or thai but um if you don't have that support, I think it's a little difficult to run those typical boolean searches but I think at the end of the day uh if it's a Python technology or if it's a Java or it's a UI, they're bound to write that in English. Yeah. So I think it makes it easier. So Boolean searches do work, but I wouldn't say that, you know, you could only rely on that. So uh, different channels like WeChat or Line or in Japan, there are new uh, professional networking sites like Wantedly. I think those kind mm -hmm. of uh, uh, you know, uh, professional websites do surely work in APAC. It's very essential that you have a proactive connect with the candidates. So I think, yes, it is extremely important to have that proactively built pipeline for sure. And I think that's the only way to 
have success in Asia Pacific for sure. What's the hardest country in APAC so far for you to, to, to source or especially engage people in? China, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably because um, it's a huge country. The market is huge there. Um, it's very difficult for me to connect with people there. I think mm. LinkedIn was amazing. They have a good presence on LinkedIn. But, I, you know, when I was doing my research initially, in, um, when I started working on China, I noticed that all the social media sites like Facebook, YouTube, everything is blocked there. So obviously they have their own government restrictions. So mm -hmm. um, I kept wondering what works there. So that's how I actually came down to a conclusion that, I mean, through my research, I just found out that it, WeChat works there or Weibo works there. That's like the micro blogging, blogging site that they have or Renren works there. But again, it all comes down to the language, right? I mean, mm. it's all in Chinese. At the end of the day, you would always find that button on our Google bar where it translates some, <laughs> I mean, translate the content for you. So I think China is very difficult. I do get responses via LinkedIn. Uh, the candidate response ratio is quite good, but mm -hmm. to connect with them is again difficult because um, I think obviously me being in India calling overseas is again a challenge, right? Like mm -hmm. to match their zones. And of course, you're not too open to answer the calls from overseas. Yeah. So I think kind of challenges is something that I definitely uh, face. But I think with WeChat, it just makes my life really easier uh, to talk to people in China because it's easy for me to just, and of course, every CV, I mean, I would at, at least say that 80% of CVs do, I mean, candidates do mention their WeChat IDs, yeah. which is really easy for me to connect with them. And they're quite responsive. Surprisingly, I mean, they are not, uh, you know, they're not too uh, non-responsive mm -hmm. over WeChat, they immediately respond. So I think that has made my life easier. But other than that, I think uh, because of the job boards are all in Chinese. So I think China is the most difficult market for sure. What about Japan? Because that's always been one of those countries where just the culture of changing jobs or even talking about changing jobs. And that's always been and it's an enigma for a lot of like European and American recruiters and sourcers. What's been, you know, what's been your tricks of how to get to talk to people or what, what kind of channels did they respond best on? If I look at um, countries like Japan, uh, people don't switch jobs there. No. It's still the traditional uh, methodology of registering yourself to um, a local agency that they rely on, like a recruiting firm. They enroll themselves, they walk up to their office, hire a consultant and find jobs. So it's very, very difficult to convince them to switch jobs, right? Like big players like Sony, Mitsubishi, they're all Japanese giants. Yeah. And right when they graduate, I, I think they have been there forever for the rest of their life. They love spending time. And I think the employee retention is, I mean, they're so happy with their organizations. So I think markets like these, definitely it's very difficult to convince, um, uh, you know, candidates to switch jobs. You have to have a very, very strong employer brand in these kind of regions. You need to talk about your culture. You need to have a very strong employer brand presence. You need to... Um, be very active on social media, talking about uh, what is currently happening in your organization, like little insights about um, any uh, accreditation. So it could be anything, but you need to be really present, be there uh, and talk about your organization in these kind of markets. And I think with Wantedly, um, as I said, you know, in specifically in Japan, it's a wonderful platform um, and Times are changing for sure. I think more and more candidates are now looking up to um, organizations who have, uh, you know, who talk about cultures and they're yeah. keen to switch jobs. So, um, you know, LinkedIn, uh, I think there are very less users of LinkedIn in Japan. But uh, if I just have a look at Wantedly, it works amazing because they they don't focus on the employee number of employees or the benefits. They talk about the culture. Mm -hmm. They invite candidates to visit the office and, you know, 
spend time with the engineers or the developers there and then you know have a look and feel of uh, experience the culture there and then you can join the organization so i think these kind of things are very very important um, considering the culture of apac which is a little conservative i would say what's some of the tools that you use and like you know nothing is going to going to go over the whole beach and what's some of the tools other than kind of linkedin that 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 you have used and that you're still using i think um with uh, github works amazing uh, if you're looking for developers github works fantastic um in apac for sure and with github i think data miner works the best so scraping the data i think that works the best so i use github um uh, data miner i use hire tool as well so these are some of the tools that i extensively use sometimes hire tool works the best um if the linkedin profiles are really complete mm-hmm. not that gives um, 100% success but for sure i think hireachel helps me a lot um, uh, to find email addresses uh, boolean assistant helps me as well so i think these kind of tools definitely help me and in terms of your career as well what were some of the places or some of the people that that you went to to learn in terms of sourcing and just when you do research on a new country like how do you go about that the couple of things that i really look up to is um some of the social talent videos ere um i i do have a look at all the youtube videos for sure um i've seen a lot of uh, videos who talk about the uh, the experiences there mm-hmm. and uh, uh also i i have a i also read about a lot of uh, surveys that are published by the recruiting local recruiting agencies i think that just gives a very good uh, market scenario so the market intelligence reports that are published every year i think that is really helpful to understand what are the salary ranges or uh, what is the kind of market that is available so if i'm looking at it specifically because we come from it backgrounds so how good is the market in the that particular country so these kind of survey reports definitely help me to do my homework and uh, of course linkedin uh, insights i think that's a wonderful way of looking at your competition uh, you know who's where i think that helps a lot so i def- when i when i have to you know uh, work on a new country i really re- rely on linkedin um, insights for sure and what's uh, something exciting that that you're working on now or you know that that you're going to be working on that i think recently uh, a couple of months ago i was a speaker at tascon mm-hmm. and that was something i really enjoyed um i enjoyed being on the other side of the audience right which i never had experienced but i think i really enjoyed uh talking about and taking through the um asia pacific as a region so my topic was basically decoding apac mm-hmm. and uh, i was talking about the cultures the uh, the challenges and how uh, you know what what are the different things that you could do to be successful in um, asia pacific as a region right from uh, the tools that i just spoke about also about the um, you know each of the region how different the cultures are and uh, you know how could you get through to speak to candidates so i think that was the most exciting thing that i did recently um anucha if people want to stay in touch with you and and follow you and and seeing what you're doing with apac how can they best do that i am active on twitter so my twitter handle is anuja kulkarni29 so they can always connect with me on twitter and also i'm very active on linkedin as well so they can search for my name anuja kulkarni i think i'm very active uh, on linkedin as well thank you very much and uh, i look forward to talking to you again likewise thank you okay.